It is nice to see you, and as, as Steve said, thank you for coming out on a less than lovely evening, a little, little, little head start on winter, even though we've got quite a bit of time until winter comes. Uh, and it's so nice to see faces. I love getting a chance to see you because just, just a little context, when we're doing stateside, we, they carved out a space for us, but sadly that space didn't include windows. So we spend, we go in at 8.30 or 9 in the morning and uh, no windows all day. The studio has no windows, the office has no windows, so it's fake light, no windows, and we call it, it's our little back cave. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, if anybody remembers the time machine, H.G. Wells, the time machine, we emerge like the Morlocks at the end of the day, blinking into the sunlight. Um, so to see folks that, are at the other end of the equation when we're working to put on stateside and talking into that microphone. It's so nice to see the faces of folks who are on the other end receiving what we're doing. So thank you first for being a part of the Michigan Radio family. And yeah, it's exciting to think of another trip. Uh, I'll tell you a little about the Ireland trip because it was very enlightening for me. I had never done a guided tour. I had never done, I've been going for Ireland, I've been going for <clears throat> since 1973, and I happened to marry someone from there, so that, that kind of helped. Uh, so th I was on my 40 umpteenth trip. So I had seen Ireland and knew it intimately as someone with family who bought a home there in 97. So we have our cottage. So we always saw ourselves as kind of not tourists, but just there because grandma was there and grandpa and aunts and uncles. So to get a chance to see the other side, to see what it's like to be checked into a beautiful hotel and have someone driving that bus so you're not on the road going, woo, <laughs> or fighting over the fact that Google Maps sent you down the wrong turn and where are we supposed to be, all of that was gone. It was so nice just to let it be. Brian was our tour guide. He was absolutely spectacular. He became like family to us. We began in Dublin and we worked our way around the south of Ireland through Kilkenny over to, through Cork to Killarney, up to Limerick, we visited Galway, ended at a castle north of Dublin, and it was just, everything was so well planned, I have to say, and it was nice, the bus had Wi-Fi, if you wanted to snooze you could, if you wanted to read, you wanted to look at scenery, it just took so much of the stress that can happen on a road trip. Road trips are fun, but they do present their challenges at times. The hotels were all beautiful. The outings that we did were beautiful. And what was really great was seeing the relationships that developed between travelers who didn't know each other necessarily, groups or couples and some families, but they didn't know each other before, but there were friends after. Everybody was exchanging email addresses and phone numbers. And I think that having that foundation of folks from Michigan mostly, although some people had relatives come from elsewhere and that's kind of fun too, you're welcome to do that. We had some who had relatives join them who flew from Texas. But largely it was Michigan residents who listened to public radio, who listened to Michigan radio. So kind of like-minded people who were curious and we just all clicked. So that gave it a big start and we just spent that time together. And the other thing that we, found was really great is that there was a, a nice balance of group time, but also time to just go do your thing. Not everybody wants to be joined at the hip. We're not a military platoon marching in, unis in unison. There are some choices you could do. There is free time so you could kind of zip off and go explore what you want to do and you go explore what you want to do, find your own place, find, find something that appeals to you for dinner. So we really like that balance of group time, and if, for lack of a better term, me time. Uh, and that really was, I mean, we walked away going, this is great, this is really, really good. So having now experienced it on both sides, I, I was, I have to say, I recommend it highly. So when they said, how would you like to go to France? I said, yes, I would. Uh, and share it with Michigan Radio listeners again. Um, and as you'll hear, it's a wonderful itinerary. Um, and the really special thing is we would be there uh, just a month after the 75th anniversary of D-Day. If anyone listens to Stateside, you know that the quickest way to my heart is to get, is when my producer said, we have a World War II veteran for you to talk to. And I'm like, bring him. Uh, bring her. I'd love to. So. Um, uh, and I had the pleasure of being, and the honor, really, of being uh, in Normandy for 
uh, a tour uh, that my family did, it was a self-guided tour, the month after the 70th anniversary of D-Day, and the shop windows are decorated, and everybody really goes out of their way, and we're going to hear a little more about the details of that. But uh, So I'm glad you're here to find out about it. I hope that uh, we can convince you to come along on this tour and spread the word, and I think now it's time for you to hear details, and we can talk after if you have questions. But let me bring up from Colette Tours, Ed McKenna, he's going to walk you through what the tour will entail. Ed, take it away. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, I think Steve and Cindy do have the longest drive. I'm from South Lyon, so I might get second longest drive. Although she's from Normandy herself, so there's an honorable mention in there somewhere. Um, what I'm going to do is give you a little bit of information about our company tonight. Then I'm going to talk about the actual trip. And then afterwards, if you're interested, you know, interested in signing up, I'll go over how you can do that and how you can save some money as well, okay? First of all, just a little bit about me. Uh, I mentioned I live in South Lyon. I've been with the company for 28 and a half years, and I kind of cover the Southeast Michigan region. Um, this is my family. We love to travel. Um, it's one of the things that we do to, you know, give us something to look forward to. And uh, this past September, I just became an empty nester. So my youngest daughter just uh, is in her first year at Michigan State. My other daughter is a third year at junior at uh, Michigan. My wife went to Michigan, and I went to Michigan State. So we're now an evenly divided family. Yes. Okay? So we're having a lot of fun with that, and we're going to ride that rivalry all the way to the end. So. As a company, um, we are we are one of those companies that you'll see on the Wheel of Fortune. We've been on that uh, Wheel of Fortune for a little over 20 years now, and it's a partnership we're very proud of. And this year we had over 175 different packages touching upon all seven continents. And this year we are celebrating our 100th anniversary as a company. So um, family owned, Sullivan's have owned it since 62. And it's a big benchmark for any company to have, let alone a young, humble, uh, family-owned company. So I'm uh, very proud to be a small part of that. Now, whenever you are traveling with us, we like to be very innovative in our approach. So when you go to France, this will be how you're going to be getting it. Okay? <laughs> so first class accommodations all the way. Um, taking a guided tour is very different than if you're going on your own. And one of the things taking a guided tour does for you is it takes that component of stress out of your, out of your experience. So if you're going on your own, you might be driving on a different side of the road, you may be sitting on a different side of the car seat, you may be juggling maps, standing in line to get into venues, standing in line to buy tickets, with the guided tour, it takes all of that right out of the picture. And it just makes it more comfortable, easier. You can focus on enjoying each other and enjoying the destination, okay? Plus, having that guide with you, when you do have you know, all these great iconic sites included for you, by design, we also allow some leisure time. So if there's things that you want to pursue while you're there on your own, you can approach that guide they can help you, steer you in the right direction, and going about to do those other things. Plus, we're going to take your suitcases up to your room, down from your room. The gratuities for those people that do that, that's all included for you as well. Okay? So it just makes it fun, easy. And the guide will let you know moment to moment, hour to hour, where and when you have to be, so you don't even have to think. And that's why I like this kind of experience. Okay? So, France Magnifique, to have a package where you've got an iconic city like Paris, when you're going to get out into the countryside and a UNESCO World Heritage Site like the Loire Valley, full of chateaus, and then go all the way down to Nice and Monte Carlo and Monaco and have a world-class event like the 75th anniversary of 
the largest amphibious invasion in the world. And to top it off, if that's not enough, you're doing it with Cynthia Canty. <laughs> You've got a pretty good experience there for you, okay? And of course, all the cuisine. Um, number one, we have the hotels proudly listed in the brochure. We encourage you to Google them. I think you're going to be really pleased with the accommodations we've chosen. When you're in St. Malo, you're on the water. And when you're out in the Lower Valley, you will be staying for two nights at a chateau. Okay? And uh, the other thing is, when we bring in the meals, it's all your breakfast, at least half of your dinners, and the dinners are really incorporating the regional elements of the cuisine, so that your culinary experience is really representative of what that destination is all about. And of course, we know France, the sauces, the champagnes, they're all about the food. So if you're a foodie, you're going to the right place. All right, so just to give you a little bit of a snapshot, two nights Paris, then we're gonna head westward, we're gonna do two nights Cane, we're gonna stop at Bayou, and then we're gonna really explore the Normandy, the 75th anniversary, okay? From Juno Beach, Utah, Point du Hoc, all those sites where this it really happened. Then from there, St. Malo for two nights, that's right on the water. Your hotel is literally across the street from the English Channel. Okay. And we're going to uh, spoke out. And we're going to visit something called Le Mont Saint Michel. It's a real treat. If, if nothing else, that alone should blow your mind. From there, we're going to do a, another little unknown jewel of a medieval city, Dinan, and also Chinon, and then two nights in Amblois at your chateau. From there, we're going to go down to Lyon, and it's the capital, the gastronomical capital of France. Then we're going to go direct south to Avignon, known for the Palace of the Popes. And then from there, two extra nights at the end in Nice, Monte Carlo, and Monaco. It's a great way to cap it off and make this trip a finale. And then from there, maybe back home, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't forget your passport. If you have to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, overnight flight. Um, the predominant flight schedules I've seen would be here, possibly to New York, or Logan, and then into uh, Paris, okay? So overnight flights. Paris, two million people above ground. Um, six billion below ground. They've got the catacombs <laughs> over there. And uh, it's a city that we modeled our Washington, D.C. after, okay? So when you get there that evening, we're gonna start you off with a cruise down the Seine River. People sitting with their legs dangling over the riverbanks, drinking their favorite bottle of French wine. We're gonna take you right past some iconic sites like the Notre Dame Cathedral. And then afterwards, we've got this welcome. How you doing? After that, we're gonna take you to a brasserie for your dinner, uh, complete with the Art Nouveau background has all that jazz and Hemingway um, mystique to it, and really immerse you into the culinary experience. Okay. So I mentioned we like to be innovative, other than taking flying camels to get to where you want to go. Um, rather than just saying, here's a Paris tour, take it or leave it, we're going to allow you to tailor that tour to, to a way that you're going to be more uh, in tune to enjoy it. So the first way is either on a panoramic tour on a bus, you're going to stop at all these iconic sites, or you take the metro, which is the Paris subway. Yeah. So you're doing a little bit more walking. The Paris subways are very easy to figure out. Uh, when we went, we had my two daughters um, tell us where and how to do this and buy the tokens and the whole bit. And they picked it up really quick, really easily, and they let us you know all the way. So on this tour, both tours, you are, both tours will go into the Notre Dame Cathedral, okay? Both will get you to see the Arc de Triomphe. Now one of the things I might suggest you do after we introduce you on both of these city tours is maybe you want to go back here. This is actually a rotary. You can take the tunnel that takes you right to the bottom, take the elevator to the top, 
And up top, we have a nice museum up there. But you also get these 360 degree views of the entire city. And the way it's laid out, it was a city that was built deliberately with a plan. It didn't just kind of evolve, put a road here, put a road there. It really was done systematically, and that's how we set up and designed Washington, D.C. Okay? So that's one thing you might want to do. Also, Place Vendome, we've got some really interesting um, living arrangements here. The Place de la Concorde, which is where the tank duels from the World Wars occurred. And it's also where, the during the French Revolution, where the beheadings took place, right at Place de la Concorde as well. So these tours will both include all these features. And of course, the Champs-Élysées, the Grand Avenue, with all the boutique shops, the cafes, the eateries, and all that's included on all these tours. So you just let us know, do you want to go by metro, or do you want to go by bus, OK? <coughs> right. And the other thing you may want to do is get up into the Montmartre district, where you actually take an escalator on the outside of the hill to get to the top, and it's where all the artists are out there doing their craft, and uh, a lot of great restaurants up there. You have the Franco-Prussian uh, Cathedral, and directly across from it, you have the view of the Eiffel Tower. So everything is right there. All right. And then afterwards, we have that free time to attack and do the things that you might want to do. Now, I mentioned there's six million people underground, they extracted all the marble and the granite for all these great palaces, like the Louvre, the Palace of Versailles. And as a result, they have all this miles and miles of these tunnels. And back, you know, centuries ago, they didn't have a lot of space to bury their dead, so they put them in these catacombs. So you have skulls and collections of bones beneath the, beneath the, uh, beneath the ground. Now my wife and I, we did the catacombs probably 10 or 15 years ago. There were no lines to get in. A few years back, National Geographic did a five-page feature on them. When we took our kids there, the lines were crazy. So uh, things may have died down. But it is an interesting, darker, bizarre type of an experience. But it's, it's true life, and it's real. And these are sometimes the things and the reasons we travel are to see things different than what we're used to here, right? And of course, the Louvre, the former palace. Now it's probably the most renowned museum in the entire world. We do offer this as an option. But you can pre-purchase that. You have a local docent take you through. You have about 650,000 pieces of art. Um, sculptures, Egyptian antiquities, uh, the most famous of them, the Venus de Milo, and of course, which one? The Mona Lisa. Yeah. Okay. Right. So after we've explored Paris and done all those interesting things, also if you're uh, an art lover, you have the Museum d'Orsay, which is fresh French impressions. So that's another thing you may want to do when you're there as well. So, on to Normandy, 75th anniversary next year, June 6th, oh, 1944. And if you recall, there was a big storm that morning. It kind of held yeah. up the, uh, the initial go sign. Um, and when they did, they hit. It was a real collaborative effort between the uh, British, the Canadians, and us, uh, as far as who was assigned which beaches. You've got Utah, Juneau. Um, and this was really the point where we decided we're going to try to penetrate, penetrate this famous Atlantic Wall. It was uh, General Rommel, the German general, who set up what they called the Atlantic Wall that went from Scandinavia all the way down to Spain, and it was believed that it was impenetrable. There was all these German fortifications along the way. So we came in here. Um, my uncle was part of the 101st, and he jumped at 2 a.m. that morning, and he landed in the fields, which were flooded intentionally by the Germans in hopes that they would drown, and some of them did. Uh, my uncle luckily made it, eventually continued on to the Battle of the Bulge, 
And if you ever saw the movie The Band of Brothers, mm -hmm. that's what those folks, they were the 101st. So you learn about these things from these guides. Many of their local guides have master's degrees in American history. And so many questions that you have about, you know, where do they go to the bathroom? How do they do food? They have these answers to these really awesome, uh, you know, curious questions about the world. And it's amazing, because you see this pristine, soft, peaceful beaches, and to try and imagine a horrendous thunder um, and what actually occurred that day at a great cost. I mean, that day alone was 10,000 of our soldiers um, that we lost. Plus, as the war went on, hundreds of thousands. So um, it's amazing. They've got sculptures, uh, plaques, ponds, monuments of all different sorts. And the interesting thing, they, they call these mulberry ports that were put out there and lined up so that they could roll the tanks and the equipment in, and then they just left them there so that people, you know, would have a, the remains of what went on during the war. And you hear the stories where, the, like, the second and third and the fourth waves, if they came in, in order to duck down and avoid enemy fire, they would duck beneath mounds of their comrades who were piled up in front of them so that they could avoid getting hit. And then eventually they, you know, continued. So um, the sheer dynamics of this and the area that we eventually were able to get through was probably the area you would least pick if you were anybody because it was at Point du Hoc, which was a hundred foot cliff where they went up rappel ropes. You wouldn't even think of doing that anywhere. You just say, let's just go up the beach. But that's what they went up. And if that wasn't tough enough in itself, they did it with enemy fire coming down at them. And that was the point where we eventually got through by the sheer will of it. So you're there, you see it, and it'll, you know, it'll blow your mind. Really, the best depiction of that morning is the movie The Saving of Private Ryan. Mm -hmm. When people walk out of that movie, the impact it has on you. You understand what those guys, those young guys, about 18 to 20 years old, went through that day. Right. Which they shot in Ireland. Did they really? Mm -hmm. that, guys, that opening battle sequence was shot in County Wexford because the Norman coast was too built up. Wow. So Spielberg found a beach yeah. and used the Irish National Guard. Where was that at? City? In County Wexford. Tony Wexford. Those opening, that opening half oh, yeah. sequence. Yeah. That's the most intense war it scene is. I've ever seen in my yeah. life. It was the most real. So you're up here and you're in the cemeteries and there's little, as much as they know about the men is stated on the on their um, tombstone or their cross. So if they had, if they were, did have a wife or a brother or what have you, they will tell whatever they know on there. So each one has their own story. And again, very impactful as well. So you go out to some of the, the gunner tomb, the gunner pads, if you will, which were usually several hundred yards back from the, the edge of the cliff. So there's usually the gunner and then a runner who would run to the edge, see where the ships are, run back, and tell them which way to aim so that they could hit them. And they said most of those guys ended up deaf because of the the thunders from the, uh, from the you know, explosion. St. Mary Glace, um, another little town. This is where the 82nd Airborne landed. And there's an airborne museum there. And John Steele was the gentleman who actually got hung up on this church steeple. And all the Germans were walking down below him. So he had to pretend that he was dead. Otherwise, they probably would have just shot him. And then eventually when the, the rest of the troops came in, the Germans got pushed out and they got him down. Now if you ever saw the movie The Longest Day, you know, John Wayne, um, Robert Mitchum, and a whole host of famous actors, that was Red Buttons who was portrayed John Steele in that, on that movie. Okay? Which brings me to another point. When I, was, when I took the channel from London to Paris with my family, there wasn't enough seats where my family sat on the train, so I let them sit there and I sat with this family from France and we talked about this event and they said that in France on June 6th, every year, they played that movie, The Longest Day. 
And I wasn't even born then, but this young French family, they were thanking me just because I was an American for what our country did that day. So the appreciation is there, and when you get to some of these small towns like Bayou, they're proudly selling, you know, um, souvenirs with the 101st, the 82nd Airborne, the 2nd Ranger Battalion, all those things. You know, they're basically celebrating and embracing, uh, uh, you know, us folks from America. So it's really awesome to see. So when you're in the town of Bayou, one of the things that they have there is this tapestry. It's 230 feet long. It depicts the conquest of uh, England, the Norman conquest of England. So the tapestry is pretty interesting from that perspective. But I think you'll like the, the village of Bayou even more so than the tapestry because it's like the quintessential French village with the cobblestone streets and all the shops and the eateries and the galleries. And I know my family really enjoyed it. Okay. But this is the reason we're going to take you there, and you're going to fall in love with the village and the people. Right. So from there, uh, one of these lesser known jewels, Dinan. You've got, it's one of the best preserved French cities, uh, medieval cities. And again, we're going to give you this choice where you can take uh, a walking tour, or what we call the petite, Petit, La Petite Train Tour, which is like a little tram car. You go up the cobblestone streets, it takes you down the main center, and a lot of great shopping here. Just that quaint little charming French village feel to it, and people enjoy the night. Right. So from there, on to St. Malo, another great, significant port city, um, severely uh, destroyed during the wars. And what they did was they took this painstakingly effort to build, rebuild it stone by stone so that it still retained that old, centuries old charm and still a very significant port city. We're in a hotel that's going to be right there on the water, right across the street from the main avenue, right on the uh, English Channel. And uh, this is going to be our stop off point for two nights. We are going to hit and visit Le Mont Saint Michel for that next day. Now this is this mountainous rock with this abbey built on it, and it kind of kept getting, century after century, kept building up. It's a, almost a self-contained city slash village. There's a hotel there. There are lots of eateries, and you walk up the top. And up until recently, to get over there, you had to wait for low tide. And then you hurry up and get over there, and when the tide came back up, it would be an island again. So now they have a bridge there. And when I took my family to, on a London and Paris tour, as an extra thing, we went over to Normandy. And then as an extra thing on top of that, I said, I have to see Le Mans Saint Michel. They didn't even know what a Le Mans Saint Michel was. At the end of our experience, this was one of the main highlights for them was this. Because from afar, when you first see it, and then as you get closer, it gets bigger and bigger. It looks like the land of Oz as you <laughs> approach it. And we walk right all the way up to the top of the abbey and you explore it. And there's some interesting photo opportunities up there. And this was a real, this was a real keeper. So you'll love that. And it represented the tigers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So then we go back to St. Malo, which also has the old half-timbered houses. Again, this city, you're talking centuries old. So I encourage you to get lost in all the alleyways and just make that experience yours. So from there, out into the countryside, and this entire countryside, the Lower Valley, is protected as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And this is where all the chateaus are housed. Okay. And you are, we're going to take you to see a very interesting one. Before we do that, we're going to stop off in Chinon. This is uh, very noteworthy because this is where Joan of Arc had this vision, and she shared it with Charles VII, that he would eventually be one of the people that ended the Hundred Years' War. Okay. But before we do that, we're going to take you to your personal chateau. You're going to be staying in the Chateau de Beauvoir. 
And if you've had enough French wine, this is what it'll look like if you're up in the tree. <laughs> Where you have the opportunity to meander through the, the wine cellar, take in all the, the chandeliers up there, uh, wander through the grounds. As you can see by the picture, it has its own forest. Okay, and of course all that French decor that just give it you know where you're at. Okay, and then that evening with their on-site chef, they're going to prepare this awesome meal for you with all everything that. France is known about with their cuisine. Right. So we're going to take you to one of the more renowned chateau, chateau or not chateaus, yeah, Chateau Chenonceau. It's built right on the Cher River. See these little um, like tunnels? That's the river flowing right underneath mm -hmm. the Cher River. It's, the grounds are immense. We got these big, beautiful manicured gardens. You have to just drop you off about here, and you walk about a hundred yards. To get in there, you walk all through the place. And the story that I like about it is that this was the king's, this was built for the king's mistress. Okay? So it wasn't like a secret back then when the king's had mistress, everyone knew. But what I like about it is that when the king died, the queen kicked her out. So she you know, only put up with it for so long. So it's a great story. Then on to Amboise. This other nice little, you know, French village. You'll love the quaintness of it. Very charming. And we're going to take you to the Chateau de Claude Lucci. This is where Leonardo da Vinci spent the last three years of his life. And some of his early inventions are displayed here as well for you to see. And it wouldn't be appropriate to take you to France and not take you to a winery. So this particular winery in this area, they're known for the Chanel and Blancs and also the, uh, the Cabernets. Okay? And of course, the samplings go with them. So as you can imagine, as a tour manager, that's where they have their biggest challenge, getting everybody back on the bus. <laughs> you just want to stay there all day long. Okay? All right, so from there, on to Lyon. Lyon used to be known for the silk. Now they're known for... Um, being the gastronomical capital of Lyon. So anything culinary, this is the place. So we're going to take you to a Bouchon uh, dinner. And what that means is that they prepare everything uh, in that, they refer to it as that Lyonese uh, fair. In other words, the way the people in Lyon would prepare their food. So it's like a real re regional type of experience. Now uh, there are several Notre Dame cathedrals uh, throughout the uh, France. There's the one in Reims, there's the one in Paris, and there's the Notre Dame Cathedral of right here in uh, Lyon. So this one is up on a hill, gives you these great panoramic views of the city. And we're going to have a local guide take you down through some of the markets, um, through View Lyon, which is one of the older parts. And when you do the markets, you're going to see all the fresh fruits, vegetables, the fresh meats, and even some of the, uh, the fresh uh, desserts as well. All right. So from there, we're going to continue directly south to Avignon. And the big highlights here are the Palace of the Popes, uh, Palais de Pape. And in 1309, the Pope moved here and he was, the popes were situated here for about the next 67 years. And this palace is immense. It's one of the largest cathedrals of its kind in the world. And we're going to take you to go through about 25 of the rooms. Okay? So you're going to be up close and personal, hearing some of the stories and some of the past popes. Right. And then for that evening, we've got a special wine reception with the dinner and to finish it off with the cream brulee demonstration. Right. You get to eat it. <laughs> that would be mean to show that to you. Sorry. All right, so from there on to the, another charming town of Grasse. They're known for the uh, perfumeries. And the perfumeries were very, very important to the French people because centuries ago, their water systems were not very strong. 
So they didn't always take showers. So having perfume was very important to coexist. So you learned about the science of everything here, and you can actually design your own scent. Okay, so it's, it's a lot of fun, it's a lot of science, and people love it. And to cap it all off, we're going to finish it up with your final two nights in Nice, Monte Carlo, Monaco, the uh, French Riviera, the uh, Côte d'Azur, the turquoise waters, the lifestyles of the rich and famous, um, the promenade de Anglais, the main avenue there, the place to see and be seen. This is where we're going to cap off your trip. So it's an interesting dynamic. You've got the, you know, the mountains, you know, jumping up to the sky on one side. You've got the Rolls Royce and the yachts bobbing in the harbors on the other. And it's all right there in one little principality. The casino at Monte Carlo in the afternoon between two and seven. Uh, it's a much less stringent dress code. Um, still got to, you know, be looking fairly good. But after 7 p.m., you got to have a coat and tie and, uh, you know, a cocktail dress for the ladies. And of course, the, uh, the cathedral there, this is where the, the Hollywood story that came true, where Princess Grace married Prince Rainier. They were married here, and they're also buried here as well. And they also have the uh, Jacques Cousteau Oceanographic Museum right on the water, one of the premier aquarium museums in the world, which is right there as well. Plus you have a Picasso Museum um, also right there. And unfortunately, eventually we have to come home, so. I was just there, that's in Belfast, the Titanic is. Oh, yeah, that's the Titanic. I was there about this time a month ago. Good eye, good eye. It was great. Yeah. What is that? The, uh, the Titanic, Titanic experience. Museum. It's actually in the Titanic. We're in the Harlem World Is that Dairy? It's in Belfast. 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 Where they built the Titanic. Belfast. Belfast. The hotel is actually the old headquarters of Harlem World Oh, no. So no. when you're no. eating, you're eating in the big room where the draftsmen designed all oh. the Harlem World ships. That's pretty cool. Good eye, good eye. We do offer a travel insurance, which is $315 per person, and that allows you to, the ability to cancel for any reason right up to the day prior to the trip. Um, it could be a bad hair day. You could say a volcano erupted in Grand Rapids. We understand we get blindsided by life. And this way, you're able to just back out and get everything back less the cost of that insurance. Okay. The other thing that's wrapped into that insurance is the medical aspects of it. When we go outside the country, they don't recognize our insurances over there. So if you did incur any medical costs, when you get home, you get the claim set up, and that helps get you reimbursed. So it's kind of like uh, car insurance or home insurance. You know, you hope you never need it, but the one time that you do, you know, you're really glad that you have it. And uh, our insurance has been mentioned in the New York Times and in the USA Today as one of the more comprehensive and also one of the most competitively priced as well. And whether you're 120 or you're 20 years old, it's the same price no matter what. Whenever I take my family on these trips, whether I'm spending three, four, five, thousand dollars per person I always get the insurance most people do not to take it out and we highly encourage and recommend it we have a loyalty program and the way that works if your second trip is within 12 months from your first trip you receive a hundred and fifty dollar loyalty discount and if it's not until 13 to 24 months then it's a hundred dollar loyalty discount you don't have to sign up for it. When your name is in the system, it will automatically recognize it. So when your final invoicing comes out, it will deduct that from the end. And this is combinable with some of the other offers I'm going to share with you in a minute as well. It is out in the country, so you do need a passport. And they ask that your passport be valid for up to eight months beyond that uh, July 18th date. Okay. 
So the price starts out at $62.99. And if you sign up early enough, you save $400, bringing it down to $58.99. And if you do sign up tonight, you can extend an extra $50 early um, booking discount to make that $58.49. A couple things about the sign-up form on the back just to bring to your attention. Each person would have to fill out one of these. Okay? Um, you have to spell your name, first, middle, and last, just the same way that it is on your passport. Who you're rooming with. Um, Air Gateway, you folks would uh, be Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids is actually $100 more than the $58.99, which is out of Detroit. Okay, so if you fly from Grand Rapids, you don't have to worry about going to Detroit. Or you're just $100 more for your price from here. So you would put GRR for Air Gateway, all right? Now if you have friends or family that you would like to join with you on this trip, they do not have to come to Grand Rapids or Detroit. They would just put the city that they want to be flown from, and we'll have them meet you in Paris, okay? So if, if you have friends or family who'd like to join with you, we have lots of extra brochures here. Please take them with you. Pass them out for Christmas presents, what have you. Um, they are more than welcome. But again, they don't have to come here to join you. We'll get them from their city, meet you right in Paris. All right? Yes, and the insurance is what we highly recommend. And then when you're in Paris, you just let us know if you want the uh, metro tour or the panoramic tour, okay? You're not paying extra for that, it's just let us know which way you'd like to do that. Um, and then if you're paying by check, you make it payable to Colette. If you're paying by credit card, you can just simply write everything in here. Now here's the other thing, I know this is a big decision. Sometimes you need to go home and talk it over. If that's the case, the 800 number is up here. You can just call that number Give them all your credit card information on the phone, and that can get you set up as well. This is a first come, first serve scenario. We're holding like one bus of uh, one bus, 44 spots for this group on this departure. Okay. Does the full amount need to be submitted? No, actually, the question was: Does the full amount need to be submitted? This is kind of breaks it down right here. Um, where it asks for the deposit amount, you write in 500. Where it asks for the insurance amount, you put 315. So your total would be 815 per person to save your spot on the trip. Okay. If you are going to make any notes at all, the one I would mention on there is add $100 more to fly from Grand Rapids, just so that you, know, you remember that. So we are holding the space for Michigan Radio up until January 11th. And then after that, we've got to open it up. And the price may change because our contracts with the air carriers are only good up until January 11th as well. And then also, your deposit and your insurance, if you did sign up tonight or tomorrow or over Thanksgiving, what have you, your deposit and your insurance, you can still change your mind and cancel by January 11th and get those refunded back to you. Okay? That's not normal. Most companies, once you let go of your deposit and your insurance, you never see them again. We'd rather allow you to feel comfortable about signing up. You still got a pretty good window of time to change your mind. So that's about two months, really. And then if you did cancel after January 11th, all the way up to the date of July 18th, you'd get everything else back except for that 315 from insurance. And then your final monies are due May 19th. So I'd like to open it up to any questions you folks may have. You mentioned an optional trip to Lulu. Yes. But how do you sign up for that and how much is that? Yeah, the Louvre is... Yeah. I actually have some information about that. Is that what you're here? Yes. Okay. I'll take one of those two I'll read that up there. Thank you. Good question. The Louvre is um, $110. It's about a three-hour tour through the Louvre with a docent. So they're going to kind of introduce you because it's a huge museum, and they'll take you to some of the more iconic sites that you would want to see there. 
And the other one is the Showtime in Paris. It's uh, Paradis Latin. It's the oldest cabaret show in Paris. It's the authentic cabaret. So I just want to make you aware of that. Which way they refer to it as tasteful, tasteful nudity, but that's the way they do it. And kids are walking around the theaters and everything. Excellent meal. Um, champagne is included, um, but it's the real deal. And Transportation to that from. Transportation is included on both of these. Okay, they get you to wherever yep. the audience yeah. are. What's this extra sheet? Did you get the extra sheet? Yeah, I'm going to give you this and I'll give you mine. So you can sign up for this. My suggestion with this is to, to sign up for this by your final payment time. That way we can stamp it in your documents and it'll show that you've got it paid and you're ready to go and you won't have to mess around with any money. Plus, sometimes you wait till on tour and then they're unable to because it's unavailable. All right. Okay. So, but this is a description of, uh, of that morsel. The other thing, the weather at that time of the year. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you. This is summer, so you could be anywhere from lower 70s to lower 90s. Um, it's, it's weather, and it's weather in, just like it is here in Michigan. Yeah. Yes, sir. If you make a split between a walking and a metro or a tram or whatever, are they all going to be guided? Yes, both of them are guided. Yep. And you'll all kind of end up at the end close together and then ready to explore the rest of that afternoon, whatever interests you to kind of. So are there any questions, folks? What kind of options would somebody free? Yeah, Well, these are the ones that we don't think pretty good Is that what you're asking what options? Yeah, I mean, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, really good question. If you have dietary concerns, as you can imagine, we take people all over the world, and nowadays a lot of people do have different dietary concerns, so we're able to accommodate, whether it be gluten-free, sugar-free, um, sodium-free, vegetarian, vegan, lactose. They'll have a meeting at the very beginning where you fill out a form, and that way the guide can call ahead and have arrangements made for you um, every step of the way. Yeah. 